Mr. Speaker, I move the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Number Two, Bill 2023, being Senate Bills Number 52 of 2023. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let me begin by first appreciating and thanking the immediate former Senator for Transoia for the thought in attempting to push through this bill during the substance of the last uh, term of Parliament, Mr. Speaker. Wherever he is, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I want to assure him in a very profound and special manner that his thoughts, his vision, his aspiration, and his ideology into this bill are well captured under Senator Chimera by virtue of this particular bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the success story of devolution cannot be underestimated, Mr. Speaker. Devolution has really tremendously transformed the progress of our society, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank those governors who are doing a very good job with devolution. I know it's not all of them, but those governors who are doing a perfect job with devolution, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this special chance and opportunity to congratulate them for a job well done, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today, as I speak before this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker, the people of Maverivirini, Kazandani, and Movumbo in Kwale County are set to enjoy, since independence, Mr. Speaker, the first term accrued in that particular locality, Mr. Speaker, thanks to devolution. Mr. Speaker, as I speak before you here today, the people of Adu, Kamale Village in Kilifi County, are enjoying proper healthcare services thanks to the Revolution, Mr. Speaker. As we use that yardstick to pour praise on uh, our many governors out there, Mr. Speaker, the same yardstick, Mr. Speaker, should be employed and used by this Honorable House in demanding accountability, transparency, and oversight, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> this bill seeks to amend Article 99, Sub-Article 2, and Article 193, Sub-Article 2 of the Constitution, as well as Section 24, Subsection 2, and Section 25, Subsection 2 of the Elections Act, merely to provide that a person who has served his full term as governor shall not be eligible to be elected as a senator or a member of the county assembly. I want to imagine there is no serving governor who would want to seek election into the office of county assembly, but I know many, many of them who are currently serving their second term. And by 2027, they will have served their full term, Mr. Speaker, are desirous of running for Senate. Mr. Speaker, it is time, as a leadership of this great nation, we speak to the reality of accountability and holding various officers in government, in governance structure, accountable. Mr. Speaker, I shudder to imagine that a governor, and uh, permit me, Mr. Speaker, what I'm about to say might fly in the face of principles of natural justice. But Mr. Speaker, we have a governor from Isiolo County, Mr. Speaker. This governor has gone rogue, for lack of a better word, Mr. Speaker. This same governor has refused, Mr. Speaker, to honor invitations and summons from about two committees that I sit. I shudder to imagine if this governor serves his full term as governor and perhaps finds it fit to seek election as a senator in this honorable house, Mr. Speaker, if he's not able to submit to the oversight process as it is as a governor, what can he do when he gets to this Senate as a Senator, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, we must be truly accountable to our people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> those who will come on this floor and perhaps attempt to oppose this particular amendment, Mr. Speaker, will tell you one thing, Mr. Speaker, and I'm thinking ahead of them, Mr. Speaker. They'll come before you waving the Constitution on your face and cite Article 38, sub Article 3, Mr. Speaker, and cite Article 27, Mr. Speaker, that speaks about fundamental freedoms, fundamental uh, rights on political freedom and choices, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that is a conversation 
as a country, we should not be prepared to have for now, Mr. Speaker. I understand. I am a lawyer by profession. I understand the Constitution very well, Mr. Speaker. And I know many opponents would think this attempt by Senator Chimera to try and bar governors from coming to Senate automatically is unconstitutional, Mr. Speaker. However, Mr. Speaker, I plead with them to read that same article, Mr. Speaker, Article 38.3, Mr. Speaker. And for the benefit of doubt, perhaps I can read it for them just to stress on what that article says, Mr. Speaker. It says that every adult citizen has the right without unreasonable restrictions to be number one, registered as a voter, number two, to vote by secret ballot in any election or referendum, and lastly, Mr. Speaker, to be a candidate for public office or office within a political party of which the citizen is a member and, if elected, to hold office. Mr. Speaker, they will use this particular article in the Constitution as a cut blanche, Mr. Speaker, to advance the argument that this bill is not fit, Mr. Speaker. However, Mr. Speaker, the literal reading of this article, Mr. Speaker, has two words, without unreasonable restrictions, Mr. Speaker. Then that therefore says and means that uh, if you intend to push through such a bill, as I am doing now, Mr. Speaker, the only recourse you have is that that particular amendment bill must be excusable and justifiable in law, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> this particular bill, Mr. Speaker, in my well-considered opinion and view, the proposed limitation that seeks to bar governors from running for Senate and our county assembly, Mr. Speaker, is reasonable and justifiable as it is limited to the offices which directly exercise oversight of our county governments. Mr. Speaker, with all due respect to my colleague senators, I have tremendous respect to Senator from Washington Gishu, Senator Jackson Mandago. I have a lot of respect and admiration to Senator Ali Roba. And equally, I have tremendous, tremendous respect and of course, I, I benefit from the very amazing wisdom from the Speaker of this House, who also served as a full-time government, Mr. Speaker. But what I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, is that even this law, if we pass it today, if we pass it today, Mr. Speaker, will not apply retrogressively, Mr. Speaker. So those senators who are already sitting in this Senate as former governors have nothing to worry about, Mr. Speaker. But then the question, Mr. Speaker, is this. Out of respect for colleagues, and uh, allow me, in Swahili we say, kutohoa, Mr. Speaker, I will attempt to coin a new word. That colleagueism we have in this house, Mr. Speaker, it is impossible. It is impossible to allow a sitting senator to come before any oversight committee of this house to answer to questions during his tenure as governor in his particular area of jurisdiction, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is a, a Latin saying that says, Nemo judex in cosa sua, that no one can be allowed to be a judge of his own cause, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Article 96, sub Article 3, if my memory serves me right, Mr. Speaker, of this constitution, vests a lot of power and authority in the Senate to protect our counties and to carry out oversight function, Mr. Speaker. I know there's a debate ongoing currently, silently among us as senators on uh, how and the manner in which we intend to carry out this function, the oversight function, Mr. Speaker. And I know I don't want to go much into that because it is not material to this bill, but I just want to remind my colleague senators that what we seek to do here is in the law, is in the constitution, and our mandate is just purely to oversight people who are in charge of management of public funds, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I shudder to imagine that somebody 
who served as a full term governor appears before a committee he sits as a member a committee he chairs perhaps and there are questions as to the misdirection misapplication of finances under his watch and then you expect there will be no conflict of interest from that particular individual mr speaker mr speaker i have spoken to many people mr speaker and mr speaker the last conversation i had was from a very senior uh, colleague in the profession he's actually a senior counsel and he asked me one simple question that senator chimera why are you seeking to limit your future political choices mr speaker without the fear of any contradiction mr speaker i want to say that even if god willing i become governor of the great county of kwale i will serve my term and go and serve the people of kwale and the people of kenya in another capacity and not as a senator mr speaker in any case all i'm asking mr speaker is to give us a cooling period of about five years so that the senate is able to look into audit issues raised against that particular county have them looked into in a very impartial manner without being afraid it is a colleague senator who is supposed to answer those questions mr speaker so that on the day we end up achieving what i call real tangible and results oriented oversight mr speaker mr speaker <clears throat> i also wish to thank the committee on justice and legal affairs for their time in going through this bill i am a member of that particular committee mr speaker we took time and we went round counties especially mombasa county in form of public participation mr speaker just to receive feedback from the people over this bill mr speaker and mr speaker the people of mombasa spoke very loudly and clear in fact i was shocked that uh, the proposal was that if a governor serves his full term he has no business even seeking the position of a village elder in it mr speaker that speaks to the need as a country to have a very honest conversation on how best do we oversight our funds mr speaker mr speaker i am doing this not out of witch hunt not out of the fear to compete fairly with our colleagues who are serving as governors mr speaker but out of the prosperity mr speaker and the need to ensure there is proper accountability and transparency in the manner and which these funds that we have passed here today uh, last week sorry as a house gets to the people of Kenya mr speaker mr speaker with uh, those many many remarks mr speaker i beg to move and uh, i will call upon senator boni halwale the bullfighter from Kakamega to second mr speaker senator boni halwale thank you mr speaker mr speaker it is now 12 years since we promulgated the constitution of kenya 2010 and mr speaker not promulgated but started applying it in its current form mr speaker we have had the election 2013 mr speaker 2017 2022 and soon we are going to have the election 2027 we would only be dogs if we have not learned any lessons during this period that we have applied i am one of the proponents of us doing a, a total audit of the entire constitution so that where it has been good we continue and where it has been bad we discontinue 
And during that exercise of discontinuing where it has been bad, we replace it with something better. And where, Mr. Speaker, it has been good, we make it even better. That is all that audit is supposed to do. I therefore proudly stand in my place this afternoon to strongly support the proposal by Senator Chimera. In fact, if this motion is carried, then it will be a win for the youth of this country. Through their young colleague, they'll have proved that if you send a young senator to this house, they make a difference. Number two, it's going to be a win for integrity. Senator Chimera is still looking for support up to and including being elected for the first time. But because he's cut off fabric of integrity, he's saying, I'll put my foot down so that integrity can have its place in this Republic of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, this is not a theoretical proposal. We already have a case where the former, not the former, the current governor of Bungoma has served for five years as a speaker. So it can happen. Number two, the current speaker of this house is an immediate former governor. He's serving. So it is happening. Number three, Senator Mandako and Senator Ali Roba are serving. So we are not in the realm of theory. We are in the realm of reality. Are you telling me, Mr. Speaker, that while Speaker Lusaka was seated where you are, with those immense powers, there were no questions of oversight begging from his tenure in Bungoma? Are you telling me there are no such questions emanating from the county of Mandera, county of Washington, and the county of Kilifi? They're there. And therefore, the only goodbye, the only high high we can tell the four distinguished leaders that I've mentioned above is that nothing personal when this law will be applied the principle of application will be the usual standard. You don't take laws backwards, as the mover of the motion has said, and which is the principle that governs lawmaking all over the world. Mr. Speaker, it is not possible for a report that has found a sitting speaker culpable in matters of integrity arising from his tenure in, his, in, in office when he was in his county to find its way on the floor of this house. We don't want to pretend. It cannot. Number two, if that senator moves on and becomes a chair of a committee, he cannot... <laughs> put his own neck, as they say, on the guillotine. So we are doing hygiene of making the integrity of a person who becomes speaker, who becomes a senator, to be higher than that one of the wife of Caesar, as they say in literature. I therefore want to request this house, and more importantly, the whole country that we must make this amendment, we would like integrity, integrity to be the standard in this country. I have a personal disclaimer to make, that I have served this country faithfully for many years as a doctor of medicine, worked in Nairobi, worked in Kisi, worked in Kakamega, Worked in Msambwini, where Chimera was born, round about the time I was practicing medicine there. 
Mr. Speaker. I've served in Mombasa. And I've served as an MP. I've served as a senator twice. And I'm hoping, God willing, I'll have an opportunity to serve at yet another level. Mr. Speaker, if the country can have that kind of confidence in you, then you owe them. You owe them service. You owe them integrity. I want to make it very clear that, God willing, if I was to become the governor of any county in this country, and the great county of Kakamega in particular, that will begin my journey of exiting from politics. There's no political hygiene. Somebody climbing to the highest seat in a county, then starting to scramble back to compete with people who are now building their careers. It's that amount to taking your child to a nursery school, kindergarten, primary school, high school, and then when the guy is qualifies us to go to the, is ready to go to the university, we tell him, wait a minute, we want you to go back to class eight so that you receive the exam. Mr. Speaker, the worst that could have been happened is if the mover of the motion had said they be bad completely. He's only saying they cool for five years to allow any mess that might have taken place in their office to be sorted out. With those many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I strongly second this motion. Honorable Senators, I now propose the question that the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Number two, bill, Senate bills number 52 of 2023 be now read a second time. I will call upon the senators who have made their request to contribute to this bill. I'll start with Senator Samson Chirarge. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I know this being the last day of before we go for a short working recess in county visits, I want to say this is a very interesting bill, but from the onset, Mr. Speaker, I want to uh, oppose this bill, Mr. Speaker, on only two fronts. You know, under Article 38 on political freedoms and political rights, Mr. Speaker, I rise to oppose any way to limit and justifiably anyone to run for any elective seat. The universal suffrage of democracy. The so speaker is very clear. If governors want to run for Senate, so be it. If senators want to run for govern, governors, they want to run for members of National Assembly, MCS, President, Deputy President, Mr. Speaker, they can run, Mr. Speaker. Because in the upshot, if somebody today is a cabinet secretary and wants to run for presidency, and National Assembly has audit queries against him. Should we prevent him or her? No, Mr. Speaker. This bill, while it is noble, it undermines the freedom of rights. Mr. Speaker, because when you look at limitation of rights under Article 24, uh, it is, you cannot limit rights unjustifiably. Article 38 on political rights, there must be justification reason as to why you deny a particular right. Let governors have opportunity to run for whatever seats they want. I saw the former governor of Busia, Sospita Ojamong, ran for an MP of Teso, Teso North constituency, Mr. Speaker. I know of even a former senator, the late court Liva Omondi, also ran for a member of county assembly. We should not fear political competition. Let governors run for the seats they want, including, but not limited even to presidency, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. I know, Mr. Speaker, in a fair competition of politics, we must ensure the tenets of democracy under Article 10, 
under Article 38, under Article 24, Mr. Speaker, everybody has a right to run for any seats that they wish to run for. We should not limit at any given time. And Mr. Speaker, we can never be a prescriptive nation. We should not pass laws based on prescription. Mr. Speaker, I sit as the Vice Chairperson of the Senate Public Accounts Committee. Let's assume that our committees function optimally, although we have a challenge and you are aware that in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, the Joint Services has more money than Senate. And in fact, I am informed, Mr. Speaker, that as we go for the working recess, committees don't have even a penny or a shilling to even visit even KICC to check on the status of KICC, or even visit the roundabout if it was after problem near parliament. Because the joint services has single money, penny, they have a lot of money than the Senate and National Assembly combined. But you don't know what they are doing with it, Mr. Speaker. We wanted to do county visits. How can we have value if we cannot visit Bomet and look at the county projects? How can we have value if we cannot go to Nandi and see the stall projects that Governor Sang is presiding of? How can we, can we visit Mama Lucy Kibaki where mothers are being detained because they have given birth to newborn babies but they cannot pay the hospital maternity fees, Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker? How can we visit Kisi and see Kisi County Referral Hospital? The other day, Mr. Speaker, courtesy of your office and allocation, we were able to visit Isiolo, and we were able to get the first-hand information on what money, Mr. Speaker, when we go, when we fought here, the mediation, when we sent the mediation from this, we wanted 415 billion to counties. We wanted value for that money. So how can we be allocating counties money for 15 billion? It was reduced to 41 four billion, Mr. Speaker, Yet we cannot have enough administrative resources to oversight the same resources and projects that. So, Speaker, this is sad to many committees that they will not be even to sit, even afford water in their committees, Mr. Speaker, afford logistical support. And we are not saying we should be given uh, uh, resources to travel outside the country. What we need is the resources and committees. And that is why I'm coming to the point. The reason Senator Chimera has proposed in this bill, Mr. Speaker, that people who are governors should not be senators is because of their own audit reports. Like, for example, the senators that they are govern senators who are governors, Mr. Speaker. For example, if we were to resource our committees, such that by the time an election of 2027 is done, the Public Accounts Committee has considered the audit report of 2627. Then the governor who is serving second term, like Bungong Ma governor, can run for Senate and come here, Mr. Speaker. The, the, that is the point that we are trying to say that it is our own making. We are shooting our own foot, Mr. Speaker. Because we cannot be saying the reason we don't want governors to cool off for five years is because of the audit queries. Yet our committees are being crippled. We are, the, we are parliament, Mr. Speaker. We appropriate the money to other arms of government. Why don't we, we appropriate our money to ourselves? But the joint services and PSC find it wise to keep the money at joint services as opposed as giving money to the Senate. In fact, what we should be discussing is getting financial autonomy of the Senate and National Assembly. Let them be given their own money and decide what they want to do with their money. If Senate, we, we can't be old hostage because some um, joint services somewhere sits and decides they have more money, so speaker, and they go, they can't even fix a lift. Lift it that you wait for 30 minutes, Mr. Speaker, to 24 minutes. The reason we are discuss we are treating the symptoms, not the disease, Mr. Speaker. Let the committees function optimally so that we are not running around with bills to stop people running for our, because, because of, uh, we don't want people to run for the seats. Let us fix and ensure our committees function optimally so that any governor, and the governor of Naguru was a speaker, you can imagine if we are told the speaker, the current governor of Nakuru, not to be the senator or not to be the governor. Yet she was the speaker. She became a governor. She is now the, the she became a governor. She was a senator here. And if she finishes 10 years, she can still come back and become the, the senator, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker. So we need to be careful on how we do the law, Mr. Speaker. 
If it is, we, in fact, I want to ask colleagues, let us make laws that you, you can use it on your worst enemy. Let us go and compete, compete, compete politically, not putting obstacles. We should not fear political competition. These seats we, we are elected, we are serving in trust on behalf of others. Even if you don't like somebody running against you because he's a governor for your seat, a speaker, you should be prepare yourself politically because at the end of the day, we don't want to disfranchise voters. Because voters, when they want to go and vote, they should vote based on their belief that they want to elect Mr. Speaker. Number three, Mr. Speaker, and finally, is the other aspects. Because I know audit report, somebody will say, you know, an issue will arise in health department and that person was governor or issue of audit, HR audit or projects or prostatus, Mr. Speaker. Government exists in perpetuity. Every government, both counties are national. They exist in perpetuity. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, we should allow governors to exist, to, to, to be, uh, be to, the counties to exist because they exist. Mr. Speaker, the reason we pass Assumption of Office Act is in handing notes, we will hand over to the new governor assets and liabilities. And that is why in county public accounts and county public investment, we invite the sitting governors because government exists in perpetuity. And we grill and ask them questions, not based on their time in office, but even on their predecessors' offices, Mr. Speaker. But only if they are culpable. And Mr. Speaker, the cure is in the Constitution. And I hope uh, Senator Chimera is taking notes. Under Article 2265, personal culpability is, can be cured. So if a governor misuses resources, like a number of them, Mr. Speaker, you invoke Article 2265. They are taken to court. They are charged. And the Constitution envisages what Senator is trying to achieve by saying if you are elected a governor and you misuse and abuse your office, you will be held personally culpable. So we cannot subject a person to principle of double jeopardy. Because if we are saying, if a governor X runs for Senate, and ESCC are investigating him, then we come to parliament and again subject him to the legal adult of not being elected, Mr. Speaker, and his perception of innocence. We are subjecting that individual or those individuals to principle of double jeopardy. I know the reason they are saying is because corruption in counties. How do we cure? We make sure National Assembly appropriates more funds to ESCC to fight corruption. Say that we don't need to come with a prescriptive law to prevent a governor to go and cool off as we audit the governor. We should be giving more resources to the ESCC. And, and you know, even if they don't work, it's a creation of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. It is a creation of Constitution. It is us to give resources to ESCC to do their job. And DCI. I saw members of National Assembly the other day out of their own selfish interest in quotes. They decided to increase their own money of CDF. From 130 million, they have added themselves 30 million. So each and every member of National Assembly through CDF will be getting 160 million. Why then do they give money to ESCC, DCI, to have capacity to fight corruption? And that is what we are just saying, Mr. Speaker. This bill, while intended, and I agree with the industriousness of our law, because uh, Senator Jimera is our son-in-law from Nandi, and we gave him our daughter with the necessary customary uh, approvals, Mr. Speaker. And we are happy he's growing in stature and wisdom. But on this one, Mr. Speaker, he misfired with a lot of tremendous... Uh, he, he, we should, I, I wish he would have played the Russian roulette. But on this one, he is firing blanks, Mr. Speaker. No pun intended. The point, and you know the young people tell him, you could finish Kumalo, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> because at the end of the day, let us allow Senator, Miracle Senator, who is seated behind me, Senator... Karungo Adhangwa, the distinguished chairperson of roads, transport, and infrastructure, and he's doing a fantastic job. And the senator with the highest number of votes in the Republic of Kenya, Senator Karungo Adhangwa. Njamba, Njamba, of which area? Mr. Speaker, he was an MCA, he was a CCM. People wanted to impeach him. You can imagine if this law existed, he would not have run 
to be a senator, a miracle senator of the great people of Kiambu. So I want to ask my brother, with all tremendous respect, can we withdraw this bill and re re redesign? I know the intentions, the principle, and I, my Senator Chimera is a good friend. Although among senators, he's not so good friend, he's the chair of another caucus. But what we are just saying, can we negotiate? So that Senate does not appear that we are fighting any section, like we are fighting governance. You know, governors, people have started misinterpreting his law, Mr. Speaker, that we are fighting governors by preventing them from running for office of an MCA or Senate, Mr. Speaker. Uh, what's your point of order, Senator Chimera? Mr. Speaker, I rise under standing order 105, Mr. Speaker. Is uh, Senator Fonandi, Mr. Speaker, in order by referring to Senator Chimera, myself here, as being chair of a caucus in this house, Mr. Speaker? I am not aware that I'm a chair of any caucus, Mr. Speaker. Senator Chirigia, could you just uh, confirm which caucus uh, the Honorable Senator Chimera chairs? Mr. Speaker, uh, caucus is not defined in our standing orders, but it's just a meeting of like-minded. Is the caucus of female women senators in this house? In our, we know Mr. Speaker, and that's why he's laughing heartedly, because he knows he is leading a battalion, and he knows the reason I don't want to go to details. Let me conclude. Uh, he should just be listening to Solomonic wisdom as I dispense free of charge and on pro bono basis, Mr. Speaker. The final point, Mr. Speaker, that I wanted to make. Let us not appear that we are fighting governors. Let us fight governors based on audits and what they are doing with the money, 401 billion that we are locating to counties. So, Speaker, although I'm sad, can you believe the national budget, national executive budget is 4 trillion? But we are only, Mr. Speaker, giving 401 billion. That is around 10%, Mr. Speaker. It's not even 15% to counties. So let us make laws that strengthen the issue of oversight. Let us see money that goes to Bomet County as value, to Nandi, to Kisi, to Kiambu, to Lamu, to Turkana, to Tana River, Mr. Speaker, so that we see the value that we have. But this one, this, this amendment to the Constitution is a threat and undermines an individual political rights, Mr. Speaker. And that is why I want to ask Senator Chimera or this bill if you are a, is a minister of a minister in a national executive and you are presiding over a ministry and you want to run for presidency, will we say also you cannot run for presidency because you are a minister, wait for five years because we are still auditing your ministry, Mr. Speaker? Can we say that? Senator Lusaka, who is the current governor, sat in your seat as the Speaker of the Senate, yet we were looking at the audit queries during his, his, his tenure, Mr. Speaker. So we must, Senator Kingi was a governor in Cliff. We are doing these things in good faith, Mr. Speaker. I know Senator the, the Second has said, as the Speaker, they have enormous power. I have said in fact, there is no day Senator Kingi, Speaker of the Senate, when we are considering Cliff County audit queries has called us to say, I don't want this audit to be looked at. Because we are leaders and all in trust, Mr. Speaker. While I thank Senator Chimera for bringing this proposal, it is well intended, but Mr. Speaker, as they say, uh, as, as, as they say, Mr. Speaker, in their own words of governance and democracy, let the people decide. Folks populi, that is what Kenneth Madiba said, those who are what the people say, let the people decide. Let us not decide for the people, Mr. Speaker. And that is why, as I end, Mr. Speaker, in the, the following remarks, that we must, as a country, push for more value in Kilifi County. As Peter Tosh in a record song, when you look outside the window, do you see anything to smile about? And even Lucky Dube, Mr. Speaker, said in his, one of his record songs, if you are building more schools, more, more prisons than schools, and then there is a problem in that, in that society. We should push for equitable and equality society, Mr. Speaker. We should ensure, even as relocation is happening in Madare of 30 meters in riparian rights, Mr. Speaker, we must also not punish the Wanainchi 
who live there, but we must punish the people who approve for Wananchi to live along the rebellion rights uh, lands within our cities, and especially in Madare and other parts of this secret city, Mr. Speaker. With those very, very remarks, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I beg to reject this proposal and wait for the amendments. Either we amend into skeleton version, not to, de to demand anybody, or we reject. With those many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I oppose and reject in total this constitutional amendment bill, but I will buy a drink after this, after rejecting to Senator Chimera. He knows where to get me. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Gloria Arwoba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to strongly support this motion and this bill by Senator Chimera. Mr. Speaker, not because I do not, not because I want to limit anyone's uh, political career, Mr. Speaker, but I think there's one thing that we must start understanding that every industry, every single industry that exists on this planet has got rules and regulations, Mr. Speaker, except politics. And what we are trying to do as a progressive country is to create rules and regulations so that politics can actually be a serious career, so that people can actually take politics as, as a career. When you grow up, you want to be a politician, Mr. Speaker. In that sense then, Mr. Speaker, I wonder why any sane legislator who is aspiring to be a governor will oppose that after two terms of them being a governor, or even one term of them being a governor, the highest seat in the county, that they would oppose that they do not want to actually the, uh, 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 bring themselves down to, same, to the Senate, Mr. Speaker. It is because, Mr. Speaker, when you, look, when you listen to the arguments that uh, Senator Cherargue are giving, they're very premature arguments, Mr. Speaker, when you say that, uh, you know, they cannot imagine that uh, Governor Susan, w you know, from being a speaker, would have been limited to this and that. Mr. Speaker, we even have term limits. We have a presidential term limit. And that is, has nothing to do with uh, opposing or uh, limiting someone's political career. It's simply streamlining the industry in politics, Mr. Speaker. I have also heard people uh, quoting our constitution, but they are forgetting to highlight that particular phrase that says, unreasonable restriction, Mr. Speaker. Is it not reasonable that we say, because of the conflict of interest, we do not want you to serve as the judge and the jury? Sincerely, Mr. Speaker. We have had, even in this term, as I sit in this Senate, we have had former governors who somehow end up in committees that are playing oversight on their former administrations, Mr. Speaker. Obviously, there is conflict of interest. With respect to, to the former governors who are in this house, Governor Ali Roba, who is now a senator, and Mandago, Mr. Speaker. Governor Ali Roba is the chair of the Finance Committee, Mr. Speaker. The number of oversight activities that we are doing from previous administrations in those county governments that he has to sit and actually be a prefect of his former colleagues, Mr. Speaker, is already a conflict of interest. So, Mr. Speaker, the spirit of this bill has got nothing to do with limiting anyone's rights. The spirit of this bill has got everything to do with oversight and ensuring that those who intend to take up these offices as governors particularly. Understand that no, you're not going to be a governor and then come and sit in the Senate to cover up the corrupt dealings that your administration was involved in, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in that sense, I also want to highlight that I have gone through the JLAC uh, committee report on the same, Mr. Speaker, and I have seen that the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has strongly supported this bill, Mr. Speaker. That is an indication that even they feel the pain in terms of how do they hold these people accountable, Mr. Speaker. You have a former governor in corrupt dealings who is now a senator and enjoying the privileges of this house, Mr. Speaker. Some of those privileges being that they get to influence the spirit of the oversight committees, Mr. Speaker. How does the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission then, you know, operate 
and actually independently without any coercion deal with a situation like that, Mr. Speaker. It is difficult. Sometimes you, you, you put so much expectation in these independent bodies, but when you look at the arrangement of our politics, it is impossible to deal with corruption, Mr. Speaker. This being one of the reasons, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, back to Article 38, which many people want to quote and come back and say, oh, Article 38 of our Constitution, you know, talks about political rights, what you can and cannot do, what you must not take away from me in terms of political rights, Mr. Speaker. We are not saying that we are stopping former governors from vying. We are saying, just as we are talking about the term limits of the presidential candidates, Mr. Speaker, or the gubernatorial candidates, we are saying that we are putting a limitation that immediately after your tenure as a governor, Mr. Speaker, you have to cool off for five years so that you do not have an, a chance or an opportunity to go to the Senate or to go to the county assembly to meddle with the affairs of your corrupt dealings to ensure that the oversight arm does not get to you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that um, I've heard also Chair Argey say that you might say that governors are not immune to oversight after they leave the office, yeah, Mr. Speaker. Yes, we understand they are not immune. We understand that you can actually actively investigate a former governor. You can go ahead and, you know, through the processes of this oversight house, uh, put the petitions, have the committees go in and look at the audits, Mr. Speaker. But what we are saying is that the presence of that particular individual during that time of the audit during that time of the investigation. The presence of that individual in that house is obviously going to affect the outcome in one way or another, either through intimidation, influence, or whatever it is within the peer in one way or another. It is common sense that when anyone is being investigated, even in a public office, you are asked to step aside. And the reason they ask you to step aside is so that you do not meddle with the affairs of the investigation, Mr. Speaker. So because we do not want to get into a situation where we have senators sitting in the House who are former governors who are being investigated by certain committees, we cannot legally ask them to actually step aside as from, uh, from the Senate because they are being interrogated. So we are trying to clean up that space to ensure that in the event that there's any misappropriation of funds or corrupt dealings from these former governors, that they do not actually participate in cleaning up their mess while in the Senate, and they do not participate in influencing the wills of justice, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this bill serves as a stopgap measure so that we do not have conflict of interest, Mr. Speaker, because Obviously, you anticipate, Mr. Speaker, that if there's an allegation that has been thrown to a governor who's sitting in the Senate at that time, Mr. Speaker, the human uh, outright defense mechanism will be for that governor to try and see how to defend themselves, how to go out of, of their way to ensure that they are found innocent, Mr. Speaker, how to even talk to the colleagues who are here in Senate, you know, to try to explain things in their personal view, you know, we didn't use this money because of this, to try to influence and coerce the committee members within, who at that time, Mr. Speaker, are actually their peers, Mr. Speaker. So what we are trying to do is create a stopgap measure such that because we know you are human, because we anticipate that you are actually going to try and influence the wills of justice, Mr. Speaker. We are actually serving you with this opportunity of ensuring that you do not uh, 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 commit a further crime or commit a further sin in the eyes of the Lord. So we are putting you aside on those five years so that you can cool off in the event that you have any oversight that needs to be done in your uh, govern government, Mr. Speaker, or your former administration. Mr. Speaker, I want to point out one thing that a lot of people do not see. And uh, in, in that sense, I also, let me, let me just say that I know that the Office of the Attorney General and the Kenya Law Reforms Commission have got, they have actually voiced their, let's say, not really supporting, but they are saying that this might conflict with the, with the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. We are legislators. We amend laws. And Mr. Speaker, so many times 
whatever is in the constitution is even declared and constitution by people who go to court, Mr. Speaker. So what we are doing is nothing new, Mr. Speaker. In fact, even in this spirit of creating this uh, five-year cool off for Senate, Mr. Speaker, for governors, Mr. Speaker, uh, the argument from the Attorney General's office is that if you are going to carry out this kind of amendment to governors, it should not be specific only to governors. In fact, the way I understood the feedback from the Attorney General and the, the Kenya Law Reforms Commission is that they're saying, why should you stop the governor from only vying in the Senate? They're saying that, in fact, you should stop the governor from vying uh, to the upper house, the Senate, but because also the National Assembly conducts oversight that somehow, to an extent, could touch the county government, that they should also not vie in the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. So, in fact, in my understanding of what these two agencies have given feedback, is they are almost encouraging us to say that it should not be limited that a governor who has finished their term can not only serve in the Senate, but they should also be barred from serving in the National Assembly and the County Assembly for a period of five years, Mr. Speaker, because all these houses serve as oversight houses. So you cannot discriminate that particular uh, limitation to just the Senate, Mr. Speaker. And I agree, 100%, I agree. And then there was a question by Senator Cherargay that why are you only targeting governors? What about the presidents or the deputy presidents, you know? Should they come out of their term and be allowed to go to the National Assembly? I say absolutely not, Mr. Speaker. In fact, thank you, Senator Chimera, for bringing this thing, because this thing now, when, the more we talk about it, the more you realize that it should not just target the governors, Mr. Speaker. It should actually be extended to the president, to the deputy president, because in real sense, the same uh, the, the basis of this bill, if, it's, if it is to safeguard and act as a stopgap measure, then can you imagine a situation where you have a president or a deputy president deciding that, okay, my people from my constituency actually, they want me to go back and represent them as a constituency uh, member of parliament, Mr. Speaker. What will that mean, Mr. Speaker, in terms of oversight? What will that mean in terms of conflict of interest in the event that that administration of that deputy president, of that former uh, president, was actually engaged in misappropriation of funds to an extent that was touching on funds that were going um, to projects in the constituency or, or other county levels, Mr. Speaker. I say, let us not be discriminatory towards governors alone. This should apply because we are trying to clean up politics. It should apply to any political seat, Mr. Speaker, that actually poses a conflict of interest. And that the presidential seat is a political seat. The deputy president seat is a political seat. Do not assume that the deputy president will not go back to Madira to vie as a member of parliament, Mr. Speaker. Because if they want, they can. As it is now, that is the, 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 how our constitution is, Mr. Speaker. In that sense, if we are saying governors have to have a five-year cool-off period, then the president should the deputy president should, and it should not be limited to the Senate. It should be extended that they cannot vie in the Senate, and they cannot vie in the National Assembly, and they cannot go to the County Assembly to become members of County Assembly. And Mr. Speaker, dare I say, they cannot go and hold a speaker seat, Mr. Speaker, because all these seats are political and they play oversight. So I dare say that this is just, the, the, Senator Chimera has just scratched the surface and actually opened a can of worms. And whether we want to just ignore this because some of us, I know that Senator uh, Cherarge is actually going to vie as the governor of uh, Nandi, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sure because he knows he's very young, Senator Cherarge is actually younger than me, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sure he has foreseen that he will probably only serve one term in Nandi. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I am very sure that the sentiments that he brought to the floor of the House is because he knows after five years he needs to go back somewhere in the politics. And that would mean that he has to either come back to the Senate or to the National Assembly. Because, Mr. Speaker, not that he's not a political heavyweight, but in Nandi, as a politician, at the age of 38 going up, 40 and above, you've expired, Mr. Speaker. Nandi is one of the counties that has the youngest legislators, the youngest. That is where everyone at, at 40. Mr. Speaker, they start looking at you as an old wise man who should go to the Senate. So I'm pretty sure that in Senator Cherargay's calculations, 
he is very well conversant that he can only serve one term in Nandi. And therefore, as a governor, and therefore I'm sure he knew that he, cannot, he has to oppose this thing because if this thing passes after his one term, uh, starting 2027, Mr. Speaker, after five years, Senator Cherargi has expired. And you know, that five-year cooling period, if you are not too young, you automatically fade out of the political scene. So as he was giving his sentiments, I actually was empathizing with him because it was more from a selfish perspective, Mr. Speaker. Having said that, I want to say that um, thank you, Senator Ch uh, Chimera, for having the balls to bring this, having the courage to bring this to the floor of the house because, Mr. Speaker, this house is very intimidating, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I, I want to thank him for actually uh, deciding that he will go forth with this, whether or not he'll be supported. And you have my support. I think this is a good idea, and I hope we see it to fusion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Arwaba. What's your point of order, Senator Karungo? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I did Senator Oroba just use the B word. You know, Mr. Speaker, I rise past one to starting order 110 that the debate of this important bill be now be adjourned till a later date, Mr. Speaker, because I believe once we have had uh, those who have contributed today, we have got the two sides of the coin, Mr. Speaker. And I believe by adjourning this debate, you give us an opportunity to go consult further. And remember, we are going on recess, so we are going back to our constituencies so that we ask questions and talk to our people, Mr. Speaker, so that when we come back, we'll be able to make an informed decision. And we are going to give the views of our people according to how we are going to collect it, Mr. Speaker. So I urge that uh, the debate be now uh, be adjourned until a later date. I invite uh, Senator, my good friend, we are both Catholics, the Senator of Busia, Senator Okia Omtata, to second me. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am more Catholic than the Pope for the, knowledge, for the information of Halwale. Mr. Speaker, sir, <clears throat> I rise to second this motion of adjournment because the matter we are dealing with concerns an amendment to the Constitution, an extremely weighty matter that demands that the House be full, everyone will be given a chance to contribute to it, and also, as my friend uh, the Senator of Kiambu has said, people go home and reflect. We have had the opening shots. We have had opening shots on both sides, and we need to go and digest them. Then when we come back here, we come in with big guns so that we can do justice to the motion I second.